Okay, welcome back to this edition of Video Drone by DIY3DTech.com. We're still out here, so we know hover's good and everything in, in this episode. And I want to get this up in the air. And home point, it's all set. So what I want to do is, you notice the sun has now come out past that, those clouds. I was hoping to get that in the last time. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this guy up a little bit higher and then I did the last time. And I'm going to yaw him around here. Um, I want to get a little bit more panoramic set. That's the part is I kind of hate on some of this. You can't read it. So alright, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to start the footage. And pretty much I'm going to just um, uh, let it kind of collect the information. So I'm still in uh, GPS mode, so that's good. It's showing approximately 12 minutes of battery life. We know we're not going to get that. We'll probably get around 8. But what I'm again hoping is I'm going to get the sun kind of moving through this clouds on this section of B-roll. Um, and again, I'm up about 90 feet now. So I'm up about three times as high. So I'm way up there. So just kind of like a tripod in the sky. Notice a little bit of the water, uh, the, the sun coming across the water now, which we didn't have before in the other B-roll. Ships are still coming down, so what I'm hoping is by the time I get to the next battery, uh, these guys will be a lot closer because I definitely look like I've got uh, at least two ships, probably three ships, downbound the lake. So that'll be some really great uh, imagery as they come down uh, because what, as they get closer, what I'll do probably in the next episode is send the spark a little bit further out and then angle it up as we... Uh, as they come down. So I get them coming down and then I'll have the sun kind of shining on them. Hey, this is video drone, right? This is about uh, getting drone video. So again, some real beautiful footage out there this morning, folks. Just kind of really love it. Um, you know, one of the things I might try doing is uh, still not really bright enough, but maybe try using one of the Polar Pro filters, the polarizing filter on this with the water. I think I'm going to try to get that in on another video. I really wasn't thinking about it. It was kind of early in the morning when I started this whole uh, gig. So uh, I think I'm going to give that a try maybe if I get time when these guys come down late. Now one of the things to notice about this B-roll too that I'm doing is the position of the sun in the video because one of the pieces that I'm doing is uh, kind of like one-third. So if you're not familiar with the one-third concept is you really don't want to center the focal point of your object in the middle of the frame because then what happens is it kind of it kind of gets lost in the frame. So this is why a lot of times on your camera you see that grid and what you want to do is, is focus your object on one of the grids. Now in this case what I've done is I've set I've put the Sun over on this side of the one-third grid and, and sort of up. So you can see it's moving through the clouds. I'm really getting some nice effect uh, on the video as it's moving through the clouds. Now one of the other things I want to do because I am a hyperlapse novice. Oh, look at the birds flying out. That would be also a great shot. I don't know if uh, I'll get some of that in the video as they go out. Um, but uh, I'm a bit of a hyperlapse novice, so I have a lot of questions, and, and I'm going to do some experimentation. And that's why I want to get this raw footage to experiment with, is how long should I make the hyperlapse, and how should I really format the hyperlapse? Um, and, and what other type of settings can I use in the hyperlapse? Because one of the things, I'm a big PowerDirector fan. I've got a number of editing suites. Um, and, and I want to experiment with them which, with regards to this hyperlapse, the effect, because I tell you what, I'm also a still photographer, uh, a still fine arts photographer, and I tell you what, this is this imagery here is a great HDR. I love HDR. I love near infrared, that kind of stuff. This is great, great stuff. You know, I would shoot a ton of brackets on this, and uh, you know, because sun's moving, you got to go pretty quick uh, if you're going to do bracketing. But I would definitely do some real quick bracketing on this. There's enough light, you can go pretty fast. I would go even maybe with a higher ISO to get the speed in there so I don't have the movement of the sun uh, in there. And you get super, super cloud depth in this whole thing. And again, you know, one of the things I want to try to get in these hyperlapses is the clouds also moving down like as the sun moves up is what I'm going to get at here. You know, so I have both motions in there. And, and this is the one thing, you know, 
Uh, well, I'm not the world's best videographer, and f far from it. I'm just a novice in the videography. In, in uh, still photography, one of the things I've discovered after doing it for 30 years, you want images that mess with the mind. And so one of the things that I, I've done a lot, I've done a lot of water photography, uh, and I'll give you guys a, tr a tip here, is turn the picture, t turn the camera a little bit, so it looks like the water is running uphill. Uh, I've done a series of those, and it really, I sold them in galleries, and it messes with people's minds, because you know the picture is tilted, but your mind can't deal with the tilt, because the, it shows the water, <coughs> excuse me, running uphill. And, and so, things like this, where you twist the frame counterintuitive to what your mind's expecting, because that's really, as you're shooting video or stills or whatever, uh, if you want it to be impactful, you need to shoot imagery that kind of counterdicts what your mind expects is normal physics, right? And this is one of the things with hyperlapse, is, is hyperlapse and things like that bring out more detail in, in what's happening. You know, because it's going to get, again, because we're speeding up the motion of the clouds and, and the sun and things like that, what's going to happen is you're going to see... Um, nuances that you would not see because they're so slow your perception of them uh, you know it's simply not there so again by by capturing it in a higher speed you notice these nuances and it sort of violates a little bit your expectations of physics you know because as I'm standing watching these clouds there there's no perceptive real motion to them and so uh, you know in the hyperlapse there is motion there's also almost really no motion to the sun you know in other words I, you know I can't it's like watching the hour hand of a clock you can't really see the clock move but you know it's moving so uh, you know again I think this is one of the key pieces you know when we're creating videography or photography and that kind of stuff with the drone to kind of remember some of those things I'm hearing sirens so I'm just kind of looking around me making sure everything's still copacetic so uh, beach is rather clear this morning. Again, I kind of thought it would be. That's why I figured I would get out here uh, this morning because, again, you know, at 40-some degrees, not a lot of people want to come to the beach. And so that's actually a good thing. And we're getting the ships down here quite uh, pretty good. So like I say, I think within the next episode, we'll do some B-roll of the ships. Now, the only thing that could be better is if the ships had a backdrop to them, a more of these type of clouds. But uh, I, I think that'll that'll actually be pretty good, though, if we, we get them in the B-roll shot over there. So, uh, again, just really having a great time out here this uh, morning. And hopefully you're enjoying some of the, uh, the, the, the imagery, um, because I know I am. I mean, this is one of the things where I just, you know, it's worth getting up in the morning to come out here. You know, listen to the waves, you know, look at the clouds and just, you know, take in just the beauty of nature out here. And again, just see all this. This is fantastic. So um, this is the one great thing about this area up here because, you know, frankly, for my day job, I could live about any place in the world. Uh, but I tell you, you know, living up here uh, off Lake Huron and everything is just really a great experience, you know. Uh, these things are basically just like great inland oceans, so very, very much enjoy it. So, uh, still kind of, uh, I'm really starting to, to clip down here. I'm now at, I think, seven minutes of video recording. So, so I think the seven minutes or so are, are pretty good for um, recording. Because one of the things I'm actually considering doing is uh, bringing my still camera out and setting it up when I do these uh, shoots to kind of capture more uh, terrestrial, uh, you know, hyperlapse footage or more conventional. Because in the more conventional sense, what you're doing is you're taking a still image every so many seconds, and then you're combining all those still images together uh, to create your hyperlapse. And so, uh, and anyways, that's kind of like the more conventional. And, and I get a question, especially RJ Make brought up a good question. What's the difference between hyperlapse and time lapse? Uh, so we've entered a low battery state, so I'm going to need to probably bring this guy back home. Again, I'm really kind of wanting to get where it crests the top of the cloud, but, uh, you know, that's where I'm a little bit short on battery life. But we got the ships coming down. I think I'm going to try to get bring, bring it back down, and then... Uh, back down and try to get some b-roll of the ships
because they're getting pretty close and it looks like I got about three of them so I think I can probably get some pretty good uh, ship video so we're bringing it down let's bring it back one of the things I'm really hoping is that uh, the Leechy app is now somewhat compatible with the Spark and I'm hoping they actually improve that pretty soon with waypoints because the waypoints aren't working and uh, because I think that would be fantastic for some for for hyperlapse okay so we need to bring this guy back over and we need him and we need to bring him back over And yeah, we need to... S Perfect. And we stopped the video. So tell you what, let's take a run over and watch the video. Let's see what this hyperlapse looks like, right? We spent all this time talking. Let's look at it. Welcome back! I tell you, another great hyperlapse. I'm really happy to start getting some of this B the roll footage in the library uh, for some other projects. So, hopefully, you found this interesting. If you did, smash the thumbs up button. Subscribe over there if you're not a subscriber. I put out tons of videos. And then uh, hit me up in the comments below. Let me know what you think. And today, I don't know, the last one was Kentucky Fried Chicken. I don't know, maybe McDonald's. Double cheeseburger meal. We're in. See you guys in the next video. Cheers.